And I want us to look back through the eyes of an African-American pastor and civil rights leader from Mississippi who's still alive today. His name is Dr. John Perkins. He saw his older brother killed. He fled Mississippi for California. But in California, that's where he met Jesus. And Jesus changed John Perkins' life and called him back to Mississippi to preach the gospel and pursue reconciliation. Well, I hope this will be encouraging for you as it is for me. It's a story and a voice we need to hear today. How did John Perkins meet Jesus? What difference did it make? I want him to tell you the story. He was born in the deep south, Mississippi. His mother died at an early age, and his upbringing kept him away from the church. I'm not typical from a church background in Mississippi. Okay. We was okay. bootleggers and gamblers, and we had our own opinion about the church in that way because we was outside of it. I hadn't found the virtues and the nurture of it, of the church, so I didn't know anything about it. You probably had a pretty low opinion of the church coming from a bootlegging family. Both, both, both see these signs that would say revival today in these big white churches, and everybody's welcome, but if I knew if I I went there, I'd be a ride. You know, so I understood that this was my church view. A family of bootleggers and gamblers, of course they didn't go to church. And even if he wanted to, if he had showed up in a black church or a white church, people wouldn't have welcomed him. This was the world he grew up in. And as he grew up in Mississippi, he saw many injustices happening to himself as well as his people. But a major turning point came when he was 17 and his older brother was killed by a local policeman. My brother had come back from fighting Hitler and my brother went to war, drafted by his nation to fight over there. He came home and he was there at a theater waiting to go upstairs. The black went in one place and the white went in the fight. And we were just out of service, the joy for time, the boys were coming home. And the black boys and girls were, were laughing and talking. And a policeman came up and struck my brother in the head with his blackjack. And that was sort of common to quieten blacks down. But he had just come in the military. And when he got hit, he turned around and dropped the, the, the guy that hit him. And that was the policeman. He backpacked and shot him two times in his stomach. And he died on his way to the hospital. And of course, when that was over, they thought our family was going to rise up and read some disturbance. Mm -hmm. And so my family thought it was better that they send us to California because we had some friends and my cousin in California. This is Haven Today, and we're listening to the story of Dr. John Perkins, a civil rights leader, but a preacher, a follower of Jesus. California was like a brand new world for John. It was here that he would eventually find a good job and get married and begin to raise a family. It seemed worlds away from the fields of the South, but even though he was physically prospering, his soul was far from the Lord. But all that changed when John's son, Spencer, at the age of three, started attending a church group. I really met Jesus through the Good News Clubs that was started by an organization that's called Child Evangelism. Yes, Child Evangelism Fellowship, yes. And and my son, they got him into these little Good News Clubs. And I began to watch his behavior. Hmm. And his behavior had a, it was developing a point of reference that I hadn't had. In life, he'd want to pray when we. He's a little boy, three years old, and uh, and then they would sing these songs. God loves the little children, all the children of the world, brown and yellow, black and white. They're all precious in His sight. God loves the little children, but here I'm hearing about God in a way I hadn't heard about God, but I had never been brought that much into the God environment. And then what happened? They got him into the Sunday school. And now he's singing these songs, which I'm new. I'm, I've just come to know Christ. I'm just coming to know Christ. And, and so I, 
boy, I got this concern, so I went to church, and they put me in an adult class. And and then I, boy, began to hear the Bible. And and, and I began, they began to have these verses in the church. I'm going to Sunday school, and they're saying, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What is that? What is that? And then the teacher was teaching this from the book of Galatians. This verse hit me. And so Paul was explaining. He said, I've been crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith and the grace of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I got that. Now, it wasn't because I was so knowledgeable, but the Holy Spirit takes the Word of God and, and applies it to your deepest longing. My deepest longing. And, and so I said, if, if there's a God in heaven to love me enough to give his only begotten son, it's my son is leading me. My son is leading me. And I want to know that God. And I came to know that God. And meeting Jesus radically changed his life. He began reading and learning about Christ in the Bible. And with the help of a local bookstore owner. She said, the Bible is the story of the revealing and the revelation of God. It's his story. And you have to know the whole story. And so you must read and get to know the whole Bible. And I read through the whole Bible. As I read it and studied it, in context, what is he saying? And it looked like it was recording on my brain. He called me then to be a, a Bible teacher, but he redeemed my name. As John Perkins walked closer with the Lord, he felt a calling to go back to Mississippi. He wanted to see change happen in the community where he had fled. And he knew that change could only come by the grace of Jesus Christ. So he packed up his wife and kids and moved back home to the South. I remember saying to my wife, Vera Mae, this, this is when the vision began to come to me in which I'm seeing fulfilled tonight. I said to her, honey, if we're gonna make a difference in this little community, this is what we got to do. We got to stay in this little community long enough that we can win some of the young people to Jesus Christ. We got to nurture them in their faith. We got to help them to get a love for God, love for themselves, and a love for the community. That's a greater love than consumerism and materialism. We're gonna have to help them stay in school, tutor them, nurture them, and then help them to go through high school, go off to college, get some skills, and come back to this community and change this community. Isn't that inspiring? An excerpt from the DVD that we have for you on the life of John Perkins. John returned to Mississippi in 1960, and he began to reach out to his community with the gospel. He believed that most long-term solutions to help the poor and needy came from grassroots and church-based efforts and by people who believed they were agents of Jesus here on planet Earth to bring about grace and justice. That means there's hope for you and me today, no matter what race you are. Hope for true unity in the church, just like the song that John Perkins heard all those years ago. It doesn't matter your skin color. Jesus died for sinners, broken and lost, And anyone who has faith in the cross and his resurrection will live for eternity.